Within this table lives a miniature world. There are trains and crane, trees and hills. I'm going to show you step by step on how I built this layout. Famous YouTubers have made them in the past but never really talked about what pieces we need and yada yada yada. It just means please watch this video. It's gonna be fun. The layout we're building today is the 1998 yearbook layout. It's iconic, beautiful, filled with classical items. This might not look like much of a challenge until you realize we're going to build this on Catchcade mode. What is Catchcade mode? For one, you must lay out your art on a proper table. No floors. The items must be 1st edition or 1998, at least in this case. And you must explain everything so even a caveman can build this layout. Which leads to either build this layout properly or be a massive loser. And yep, I just made it up. The first thing I wanted to do was figure out what we need. Goodness, this is harder than I thought. The layout had quite a lot of blind spots. I didn't know what we needed or how big this layout was gonna be, so let's start building. Yeah, this is me showing that the mail mail track adapter goes in the blind spot. You're welcome. Well, building this layout, I realized we need a lot of three and a half curve tracks and also a lot of risers. Yep, I know these aren't clickety clack tracks. We're gonna have to buy more. I started to get things going, and yes, I moved this fast, didn't speed up the clip or anything. No, why would I do that? You thought it was a joke, huh? Yeah, you're right, it's a joke. I also found a place that doesn't seem to follow the laws of physics. It's just hovering without the risers. Am I tripping over here? After arbitrarily finishing the build, miraculously, I was only missing one major track piece. Maybe a little more, but mainly I was missing a chunk of a Swiss Yard track. This forced me to buy another set. This layout uses three of these gnarly little bastards. Fun. I didn't realize how expensive this piece of track was, but I still got it. This layout uses four wooden railway mats. I was missing two mats. I believe one's called the pond, the other one's quarry. I penny pitched my way in and sent an offer. He accepted my offer. I had the audacity to ask the seller to ship this priority. I wanted it ASAP. If you guys noticed, some of the switch tracks were actually action switch tracks. I didn't have any, so I asked the lady from Facebook Marketplace. I also bought more clickety clack 3.5 curve tracks and a stacking overhead railway. I was missing two of these wooden pieces. Okay, while we wait for the items to come, we need to get a table. Let's call it the wood shop. Unable to take your call right now. So after calling 20 other places, one place finally answered and I asked him when this table can be finished by and he said November. He also told me not to trust anybody that says they can do it fast. This is bad. I need to make this happen. I had a big plan in mind and I will never, ever let those words bring us down. We have no choice. We're gonna build this ourselves. So step number one. I don't know, but I drew a plan and spent about a full 30 seconds drawing and formulating our table. And we're here in Lowe's. This was kind of nerve wracking. In my mind, I wasn't even sure this would work. Anyhow, I still needed to try. I found some lumber, transported the lumber into a cart and asked the guy to machine the lumber into the size I formulated. I also got some nails. Essentially, the nails are going to help me assemble these chunk of wood, AKA the legs. Which, we're gonna start out with. Oh my god. The wood just broke. The nail obliterated this wood. No! This is how I learned that I have to use a drill first. Legs complete. Next, I started making the frame. The drilling made a mess. Yep, that's right, that was actual smoke. Potentially a hazard. It actually smelled like burning wood, so I'm gonna use my vacuum to... Frame complete. The next step was hard. For one, I had to balance the wood to drill the legs into the frame. There's probably a better way, please don't judge me. After assembling the legs, I realized if I only use one nail, it doesn't really give us enough stability. So I disassembled the long piece of board, screwed more nails, and guys, it's looking legit. I actually didn't expect this. After the frame and legs, I also hammered in another board on the center. I thought it would give us more stability for our playboard. Okay, apparently that center board wasn't enough. So I went back to Lowe's and bought more wood and table complete. I know, I can't believe it too. We did it guys. Give me a fist pump. It's day 3 on this project. 
These are all the destinations we're gonna use, these are all the accessories we'll need, and these are all the engines. Okay, I'm missing something, am I? Yep, these are all the track pieces we'll need. I numbered them up as well, you're welcome. We also want to make sure a caveman can watch this video and be able to build it, so I first laid out the playmat. The quarry on the bottom, pond on the top. I'm still waiting for the other two mats to come, we don't have any time to waste, so we're just gonna start. I felt like the roundhouse was a good starting point. We're gonna start from this route, let's call it route number one. Route one led to Soda Bay Bridge, I used Apple Motions to explain our game plan. Previously, when I was building it on the floor, things started getting tense in this circular area. So that's why we're gonna eat that frog and get it out of the way. There's definitely not a phrase called eat that frog. There is a book called eat that frog. How did it know I was procrastinating? But now we're gonna start our next route. From the yearbook, these first two routes were more visible which meant it was easier for us to put it together. There's this one blind spot over here. I used this 4 inch straight track for this area but besides from that, everything lined up. Also, I just learned the existence of a 3 inch track. I'm not gonna make a big deal out of this, I'll just carry on, but yeah, I low-key freaked out. Didn't know it was a thing. Route complete. Next I decided to work on the upper region. This leads to the lower level circular area, passes 5 led to 6. I just used a 3.5 curve track and a 6.5 curve track to connect it. I started building and yes, we're still waiting for the risers to come. No, I know, um, what do you call this thing? You know what I mean. There were two areas that were slightly covered. We used a 6.5 curve track here and a 3.5 switch track here. But next came the actual challenge. When we built Passageway 3, we used a switch track that led to more routes. Well, one of this route leads to the cargo crane. Problem? We have a lot of blind spots, and Rusty and Stebney here isn't quite helping the cause with us building this. But guys, we're doing pretty well. Still don't know till this day if this part is identical or not, but it seems to be working. So step 3 complete. Next I started working my way into Passage 4. From the start, the tracks were covered by this mountain. Let's thank him. Thank you mountain, you're so kind for covering the tracks. Thank you for making our lives so much easier. I used a couple 3.5 curve tracks and a 3 inch track to get it flowing. It looks like the direction of the tracks changed, so I used the track adapter for that. There was another switch track. We're going to start with the part that leads to the log loader, which will lead us to the cargo crane and step 4 complete. On step number 5, I connected the other part. The tree and the suspension bridge was covering the tracks, but I think we got it right. This passage led to the same place, and it's getting a little tight. It's less tight than our first attempt, so it's pretty good. Uh, step 5 complete. I feel like at this point, we got the main infrastructure of the layout, so next, let's add in the... Uh, I'm gonna keep building. I started my way around from passage 2 connected the mountain tunnel with a track adapter, and worked my way around the edges. This was the front part of the layout, so a lot of pieces were pretty straightforward. Then I placed in the sawmill. I believed the sawmill to be another centerpiece. It was a connecting point to a lot of routes, so the angles of where we put this was very important. So I started working my way towards connecting tracks to the sawmill. I placed in the mountain tunnel. It looked majestic. This track route did not lead to the sawmill, but it's coming around. Looking good. Next I just started attaching tracks straight from the sawmill, and I initially made the mistake of putting the ascending risers first, but then realized there was a straight track before we used the ascending riser, and so this led to the suspension bridge, and after the suspension bridge, is it step number 5? 6? Um... Next I was gonna add in the Tidmas bridge and connect it to the circle. Wait, this doesn't make any sense. Okay. I think this needs to shift over there. I started fixing the problem, just how therapy should have fixed my marriage. I'm just kidding. After fixing the problem, I continued on. I felt like a badass building this sophisticated world. This is turning out so- Oh no. We have a problem. The track doesn't fit in the table. I shifted the layout and the track seems to fit now. Guys, look how precise this fit is. For once, we did something right. Last few steps were pretty straightforward, it was the nitty witty details. This part of the track led to a dead end, and I also finished the upper portion of the circle. The middle part was kind of hard, mainly because it was a big layout and awkward for me to reach, but also there were quite a few blind spots. I think we got it figured out, 
hopefully. We're just gonna wait on this switch track. Oh lord, this is satisfying. Then I had to place the two mats. This is me fighting with the mats. All the hard work started to crumble upon my eyes. But we're not gonna suffer through this here. Can we do a transition here? It's getting a little hard to watch. Mission complete. Hopefully. Next day, a couple other track pieces came. We got a three and a half curve track, replaced it. But I realized we didn't get the rising track thingy. You know what I'm talking about. I asked the seller, turns out there was a miscommunication and yeah, time is of the essence. So I decided to put some temporary wood pieces. I finished up by laying out the accessories and the engines. And ever since the visit from Day Out with Thomas, I found dioramas and layout so interesting. I always had this dream of having this layout displayed and I couldn't help myself but admire it over and over. I also started some battery operated Thomas on the layout to see what route it takes. Come on Thomas, you can do it. Okay, maybe not. I always view life as a single player game, but then I think time to time it's good to have each other's back. Yeah Thomas, let's go! This is so fun. Thomas, you're thriving, you're shooting for the- oh shit. Oh no, I'm not gonna curse. I'm just gonna shut the fu- no, no. Can we move on to the next engine? I was curious where Route 2 led us. Lady was struggling to chew her way through the curves. Yeah, there we go. Lady was going strong. You're doing so. The route Percy took was very interesting. There were tragedies along the way. Oh god, not again. It's probably the tight layout, but whoa, Percy was the only engine climbing that ascending riser, like the champ. But then Percy decided to choose the circle of death. And what do I mean by that? He was fumbling again and again in the circle. So I had to guide him out. But yeah, although these curves look aesthetically pleasing, these steep curves were not really meant for trains. Then Percy got stuck at the Soderbay Bridge. Percy was a tad too tall for the train and then he went beast mode and pushed James' tender. He was going strong. Oh god. Percy not only managed to push himself up the rail, but he also pushed the tenders. But no, that's not good. Hero later decided to choose Route 5, and he chose Freedom, and started building momentum except he wasn't able to escape. Unfortunately. I know, it's not complete yet. But after all this, certain of one thing. I really enjoyed us taking this journey and building it more than the display itself, and why not extend the fun a bit longer? We weren't able to finish it off on Cascade mode, but this also taught me. If you don't fail, you'll never truly learn. And if you never learn, nothing will ever change. And I realize we can never truly fail unless we stop trying. So let's never throw away our dreams, whatever that may be. Subscribe.